Hello everyone. In this presentation, we are talking about composition of bone or biochemistry of bone or chemical composition of bone. Okay. Before going to directly composition of bone, so let me write uh, at least one bone and we'll see just uh, what are the major structure of the bone. Just for example, imagine this is as a bone, long bone. It has got different parts. This central shaft, cylindrical shaft is called cortical bone. Cortical or also called compact bone. Compact bone. And it is very dense. This is the center. It has got bone marrow. And it is very dense. And it has 80% of mass of the bone. 80% of bone mass is compact bone or cortical bone periphery whatever this is called trabecular bone or cancellous bone which is not dense when compared to cortical bone it is also called spongy bone and also called trabecular bone okay which is actually 20 percent of bone mass because which is not dense as compared to cortical bone and it is a porous porous it's a spongy it's also called honeycomb appearance in order to understand composition and remodeling you should know there are two types one is central shaft or cylindrical shaft is called compact bone another one is spongy bone or cancellous bone or also called trabecular bone which is actually is a porous coming to the components of bone or composition of bone bone has got an organic component and inorganic component this organic components accounts for approximately about 20 percent again depending upon the type of bone whereas inorganic components roughly around 80 percent in this water account for water is also classified under inorganic so we can make this inorganic 60% and water 20%. So when I say 20% it is approximately it is 10 to 20% is water. Okay. So together water as well as other ions it will be 80%. First we will see organic. This most part of organic component of bone is protein. In this protein it has got major part is collagen. Collagen and again it has got type 1 collagen and type 5 collagen major organic component of bone is type 1 collagen it's second for about 90 to 95 percent it's a very minor amount so the protein component of organic composition of the bone or organic part of the bone is collagen collagen protein and also we have non-collagen protein the protein component which is not collagen or you can non-collagen protein. So non-collagen proteins are we studied under uh, carbohydrate chemistry what is called proteoglycan. Proteoglycan. You can also call glycoprotein or you can call them as glycosaminoglycans. So, like uh, carbohydrates also there, protein also there. And we have another non-collagen protein is called osteocalcin. It is not a collagen, but it is a protein component. Similarly, we have osteo, osteopontin and bone CLO protein. So these are organic component of bone. Mainly it is collagen, that is type 1 collagen. It accounts for 90 to 95 percent of organic component of the bone. Then a small amount of type 1 and non-collagen protein like glycosaminoglycans, osteocalcin, osteopontin and CL, bone CLO protein. Coming to the major component or composition of bone is inorganic including water in the living bone. So the major part of inorganic component is calcium and phosphorus. Okay, Phosphorus in the form of phosphate. This calcium and phosphorus is the major inorganic component of the bone which is present in the form of calcium phosphate and hydroxy group we can call this you can see there is a hydroxy group there is a specific name for this 
as hydroxy apatite hydroxy apatite okay this is the name given to inorganic component which is present in crystalline form whatever the strength for the bone is due to presence of this hydroxy apatite hydroxy apatite is nothing but calcium and phosphate they combine they form a crystalline structure the hardness or the strength or the resilience of the bone is due to this compound calcium phosphate hydroxy apatite and in fact about 99% of body calcium is present in the bone itself a bone and teeth are rich in calcium and phosphorus apart from calcium and phosphate we also have other inorganic component our bone also contains sodium magnesium fluoride carbonate even potassium chloride all these components are also present in our bone so even zinc also present selenium so many inorganic components are also present but major part is our calcium and phosphorus they are present in the form of hydroxy apatite in the form of crystalline hydroxy apatite which is actually the reason for strength or resilience of the bone apart from this we also have bone cells there are three types okay osteoblast osteocytes and osteoast when you say bone there is a continuous remodeling of the bone so i am going to explain this remodeling of the bone in the next video at this moment you should apart from organic and inorganic component bone also contains three types of cells at this moment you remember osteoblast they are actually responsible for bone formation it is called mineralization or deposition and osteoblast actually it is bone destruction or it is called resorption or bone destruction in our body there is continuous bone formation and bone destruction okay so old cells are continuously they undergo destruction and there will be new bone formation that new bone formation is called osteoid we are going to study how this new bone formation in the next video and these osteoblast and osteoclasts they are present in the surface of the bone so i am going to explain in the next video where is exactly the location of these cells okay surface of whereas osteocytes actually they derived from osteoblast they are inside the bone inside the bone inside the bone means it is not in the bone marrow inside the dense part of the bone it is called actually in the resident in the lacuna between lamellar bone there are three types of cells osteoblasts are responsible for new bone formation or deposition of the bone whereas osteoclasts are responsible destruction or resorption of the bone that is with respect to composition of bone that's about composition of bone thanks for watching